That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM. It is 12 minutes after 11 o'clock and, well, 13 degrees downtown. Bit of a struggle. The weatherman says 19 de uh, 18 degrees, I'm sorry, today. And, well, it, it's kind of getting there. But at this time of the day, you'd think, well, it would be right up there. My prediction today, 20 degrees. I'm kind of worried about that. I really am. Barbara's our co-host. She said 19 degrees today. I think she's got a better shot at it, to be honest with you. Again. But we don't want to tell her that, now do we? Tuesday, June 15th, and I'm absolutely elated. But first of all, let me do this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to uh, the Facebook Live that we have going on right now. Uh, don't forget, if you're going to watch this a little later on, after we do the show, you know, over there on YouTube, you know what to do. Yeah, you do. Sub, thumb, bell. Bingo. Uh, bell, because of notifications where we have important people like we have today. Yes, come, coming out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, is, of course, Dale Cole. You, you know about it, you do, because you've been listening to this. Ladies and gentlemen, today's feature artists on Galaxy 107 FM. That's right, today's feature artist has been Dale Cole through The Breakfast Show, and, you know, we're finding it really, really hard these days to get through a breakfast show without playing at least one Dale Cole song. So let's kick it off. Here's Eyes on the Prize, right here at Galaxy. How you feeling, Dale? You okay? Yeah, man. Thank you. That's kind word. <laughs> nice. Well, I tell you what, got to let you know, uh, 74 countries this morning uh, are tuned in around the world and... 198. 198 cities are, are logged in. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun interview. Um, I'm rather surprised, though, Dale, that Barbara didn't say to you, give him shit. <laughs> really? Yeah, normally she does. She normally says to people, you know, it's great. Give him shit. <laughs> so, uh, I've got big shoulders. Go ahead if you feel like it. <laughs> I'll do that, thank you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Believe me, uh, this will be like no other interview you've ever done before. I'm sure you've um, realised this by now. Uh, if not, I'm sure Kerry's warned you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> at some stage. I had, nice, I had a nice talk with uh, Mark today also. Oh, okay. Very cool. Uh, now, technology, don't you love it? I'm watching you, watching me, watching you. Cool as that. <laughs> yeah, like a hall of mirrors. Yeah, no, so somebody's on here that's giving us hearts and thumbs up. Well, that's good. Yeah. Might be Terry. It might be Terry. It could yeah. be. He's being sneaky. He's not showing us his. <laughs> it could be. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, could be too. Uh, but in, in the meantime, bro, I, I really wanted to make you feel at home, so I thought I'd wear something from North Carolina, and of course, you're very, very familiar with this. Oh, yeah, man, that's, that's great. Uh, I'm sure Terry appreciates the plug. Uh, <laughs> believe me. Uh, yeah, he's online right now. Uh, Dale in the house, I'm going to poke him in the eye. <laughs> oh, gosh. Terry, mm -hmm. you do that, my bro. <laughs> you do that. Look at this. Isn't this cool? I love this shirt. And I've got a great hat on today. <laughs> I do. Dale, welcome to Galaxy, my friend. Um, I'm sure that Mark said hello to you as well earlier on this morning, so uh, thank you for very much for responding. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's have some fun. <laughs> That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM. It is 17 away from 11 o'clock, 13 degrees downtown. Heading for that high, the weatherman says 18 degrees today. Cloudy, gloomy, very unnicey kind of day. 
yeah, it's a bit of a struggle to get up to 18, let alone my prediction of 20 degrees. So I'm a little worried about it, but hang in there. I have faith. And plenty of other women like that as well. Uh, but in the meantime, <laughs> nice to have you on board because, believe me, uh, a bit of blues today, a bit of me, actually. I really, really love, love, love Dale Cole's work, and I'm very humbled that Dale has joined us from Winsome Salem, coming out of North Carolina. Welcome to Galaxy, Dale. Thank you, and I'm humbled to be here. It is an absolute pleasure to have you, sir, and believe me, uh, I, I love, love, love your style. Now, uh, let's tell everybody a little bit about you. Now, Dale comes from a large musical family. Uh, his grandfather, father, uncles, and, well, you know, had the Cole family way back from the 30s all the way through the 40s. Uh, his, multiple, uh, his multiple cousins that play a wide variety of instruments as well. Uh, my best instrument is the pool. I play that well. I really do. Cole attended his junior high school dance and heard the band play Susie Q by CCR. Great song. It really is. And knew he had to play in a musical band. Uh, next he joined up with the army and uh, let's come right on down to it. Tell me a little bit, uh, Dale, about the Detonators. Oh, well, we were uh, a metal band back in the day when I was skinny and man with hair and I would go like this and my hair would go with me and uh, uh, we, we played six, seven nights a week most of the time. I did a lot of uh, songs that I wrote as well as some cover tunes and uh, it was that was a fun time, uh, late 80s, early 90s to play music, you know, around here. Believe me, I absolutely know what you're talking about there, especially about the hair. These days, if I do that, my glasses just go. Uh, you're a boy, what you talking about? You know? Yeah, but I should have one of those things on, you know, around your neck, so you got, yeah. <laughs> Showing my age, aren't I? I really am. And we kicked off the show with eyes on the prize right here at Galaxy. I think we've got our eyes completely on the prize. But Dale, tell us about the song. How did you come to the lyrics? Well, uh, the song is actually was written. It's an old uh, spiritual song that the uh, slaves would brought the United States with them. They would sing during the Civil War. Uh, and uh, maybe the Staples actually did a, a version of it, I guess, back in the 60s or 70s. And uh, I'd always liked the song. And when COVID hit, uh, we were kind of just stuck. We were, it was, we, could, we had nothing to do. The work just kind of came to me. And I, I got some friends of mine. We've got in the studio and, and uh, actually uh, recorded it. And it's done fairly well over here. Uh, we actually made the video uh, riding around on a trailer in the city of Winston Salem, uh, taking music to the streets to the people when we shot the video for. Them. That, that's a great idea, it really, really is, but at the same time, uh, no noise control, <laughs> anything like that? No, we got, we, uh, we contacted the mayor and the police department and they said that was okay. And, uh, you know, we had a generator in the back of the truck and, and got our amps and the PA back there. And, and it was just the most amazing thing I've done in a long time. People would come running out of their houses when they heard the music and we'd stop at like uh, parks or whatever and we'd have like 40, 50 people out there. In no time. That's fantastic. I love that idea. I really, really do. Uh, and believe me, uh, I, I can see it working here, actually. Yeah, I really right. could. Uh, believe me, I could, actually. Now, at the same time, Dale, uh, we've been playing you quite consistently here at Galaxy, and uh, a good friend of yours, Terry Van Cannon, da -da -da -da, uh, yeah, I love the hat too, Terry. Uh, he introduced us to you, and he says, Grant, you've got to have a listen to this. Uh, the particular song he introduced was actually Empty House Blues, but we're going to play that later down the track because, believe me, right. that is your most requested song, and you're getting a huge response on this. Uh, we we have you included on the uh, Tuesday Night Blues Show. We really, really do. Coming on a right. Wednesday morning, and we're inundated by people wanting to know who, what, when, where, and how is this all put together, and who is it, and everything like that. You know what I mean? Awesome. So we're going to do our best to cover as many questions as possible uh, as we go through this. Now, let's kick this off because I do have a fan question for you, Dale. Uh, as a fan, how do we get hold of you? Are you on Facebook? Are you on Twitter? Are you on Instagram? But more importantly, Dale... I'm on, I'm on Facebook myself called uh, with Dale, uh, as Dale Cole, and I'm on Instagram at Dale Cole Music. That's the only place you can find me. 
And then we also have the Dr. T band page with uh, my band with Terry Von Cannon and two of our friends. And, and uh, so, uh, dot, capital D, capital R, dot, capital D, dot T. Very, very cool. Now, at the same time, uh, do you respond if somebody get does get a hold of you? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm very, very good about that. I, I, uh, it's come up a highlight of the day if somebody, you know, contacts you. Well, believe me, uh, you're going to have quite a few people get a hold of you now. Unfortunately, you're not going to have much to do for the rest of the day. You're going to run out of fun power. <laughs> Now tell me about John Epstein, Dr. John Epstein, because believe me, I know you know John, and uh, he yeah. is a good friend of Galaxies as well. So let's give him a bit of a plug. How did you meet up with John? Uh, we have a uh, large, we have a large uh, musical community here in our town, and we have a thing called the Friday Night Music Club, and they'll do different events. Uh, well, pre-COVID they did, or just now coming back up, but they would have a monthly. Uh, show in a different location, different venue in town. It would be, it could be different things. It'd be like, it would have like three bands, 1984 music, or they would, whatever. But then they had a fan lotto where you put your name in to a, a, a hat, and they threw out names for five bands, and you were playing paired with people you didn't know or whatever, and you had 30 days to perform uh, like an hour's worth of music. And John and I got paired together with some other guys, and it just kind of worked out, and uh, we needed all the kind of good friends and decided when the, the show was over, we'd uh, put a band together. Very, very good. I love that idea. I really, really do. Uh, innovative people, these North Carolinians, I've got to be honest with you, they very much are. Uh, at the same time, you do know that he's a criminologist, don't you? Yes, sir. We've we, we crossed that path a couple times. <laughs> I bet you had. You know, I was kind of uh, apprehensive myself. I was thinking, you know, he's going to figure me out in no time. He really, really is. Uh, so believe me, uh, nice to have uh, good friends, especially of Terry Van Cannon and Dr. John Epstein as well. Now, at the same time, I'm loving the idea of the uh, band on the track and, of course, uh, doing the shows, you know, do a show, you know, pull a band out of the hat, let's, yeah, that's a great idea as well. Um, at the same time, with this COVID, and it's kind of a surreal time right now with this COVID virus going on, are you uh, doing more writing, more recording than uh, shows at the moment? Oh, yeah, we, my last show was in October, and uh, we've got, you, Dr. T is actually making our debut uh, August the 20th, coming up with opening up for uh, Jason Ringenberg and Jason Fortress, who was like the godfather of Americana and opened up for a whole tour for the Ramones. But uh, yeah, uh, I just not a person that can sit still long, you know. And uh, when we weren't doing the shows, we were doing Friday and Saturday or Saturday and Sunday riding around the trailer and uh, to get that out of my system. But I started writing songs again. I hadn't written a song for like 30 plus years until last March, and uh, and then this, The Eyes and the Prize was the second song that I've written, and uh, it just started coming. I'm writing two or three a week right now. You know, I, I was reading this, uh, Hyenas for 30 years. <laughs> 30 uh -huh. years! That's a long time off, my friend, uh, and to get right on back into the saddle right away, uh, fantastic. It really, really is. Nice to know, uh, what do we call it? seasoned now right that's correct yeah i like that word. yeah <laughs> absolutely uh so tell me about high maintenance woman i'm a maintenance man uh, by trade i work uh at a local university here in the, in the air conditioning hvac department so I, i've always i've done maintenance for like the 30 years that i was off music i was a maintenance <laughs> man so uh the, the the title just kind of came to me one day, you know, High Maintenance Woman, Don't Want No Maintenance Man, and I, I wrote a song about it, and uh, it, it's, there was, it's, it's a fun tune. Well, i got to be honest with you, it is picking up a lot of interest right here at Galaxy. You've got about 1,117 requests so far, so here, oh. joined live, coming out of North Carolina, is Dale Cole and High Maintenance Woman. You're right here at Galaxy. Good morning. How are you feeling, dog? Uh, uh, I love it. Awesome, man. Nice, nice. Uh, you don't need a stiff drink or anything? Excuse me? You don't need a stiff drink or anything? Oh, I've 
I've got one handy if I need it. My bar right here behind me. Oh, they're <laughs> oh, I like that idea. Uh, believe me, <laughs> I like that idea. Well, by the end of this, you might actually need a bottle or two. You never know. <laughs> tell, uh, tell me, Dale, have you ever tried a vegan sausage? Sausage? Yeah, a vegan sausage. Oh, a vegan sausage. I have not. Yeah, no, I, I ask everybody, because I haven't either, I was just wondering if they're made of real vegans. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to research that and get back to you. Yeah, well, I was disappointed because apparently girl guide biscuits weren't made of real girl guides, you know. <laughs> it took all the fun out of buying girl guide biscuits, especially off the little girl guides, you know. <laughs> you next year's you crop. You more if they were little. <laughs> well, you know, cubs. Yeah, which of your friends is in this one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 how many of your friends is in this biscuit? <laughs> are, you, are you a musician at all? Um, have been accused of that from time to time. Awesome. Yep, um, believe me, I'm a legend in my own bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I sing tenor, or 12 miles away from anybody that can hear me. Yeah, believe me, I, I don't do that to the delicate ears of the general public. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. Um, mm, I tried that one. My father stuffed that up for me singing because I actually could sing, but then he would come along and slap me on the back of the head and go, sing like Elvis, boy. And now I just everything comes out like Elvis. So I leave it to those professionals like... Um, uh, <laughs> Anthony Ligori, for instance, he, he, he's a great Elvis impersonator, sings like Elvis, you know, looks like Elvis. I leave that stuff to him. Besides, he's a um, former priest as well. Yeah. yeah. We did a show a couple of years ago, and I've got to actually back an Elvis impersonator with, with, our, with our band. He, you know, he fronted our, our band for us for a while. And that was so much fun. We got to play all the oldies and stuff. Nice, nice. I, I like that. I really do. Um, Anthony was actually touring. I don't know if you're familiar with the Hammond Brothers. I'm, I have heard them on your show. Yeah, but uh, oh. <laughs> they're um, country and whiskey. Uh, they come out of Nashville. Uh, Hall of Famers, literally. Right. And Anthony used to tour with them. Uh, Dale was into laundering money, you know. Okay, cool. Nice. <laughs> if you need another outlet, theory, right? if, if you want to wash some through my bank account, I'm sure we can work something out. <laughs> I, left, I, I left my wallet in my pants the other day and I went through the washing machine. <laughs> Very funny, <laughs> Terry. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that before. Todd Phillips is online. Hey, yeah, Todd, nice to have you on board, my bro. And don't forget we've got Scott there as well. we got Scott there as well. Scott and I'll. Scotty Knoll from British Columbia, yeah, good friend of ours, he really, really is. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, believe me, bro, we get um, the on-air producer, she's giving us information all the time, plus I'm sort of catching up with all sorts of questions oh, and bits and pieces. Technology, isn't it? Todd Phillips? Uh, Todd Phillips, yeah. He plays bass on, on uh, lots of stuff I've got on here. Very, very cool. Hi, Todd, so nice to meet you. Give him a... Um, yeah, I'm sure you know to give him a poke in the eye. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough, let's go back to the dead. Yeah, the on-air producer just says that's the way to influence people and make friends. You know, tell Dale Cole to give Todd Phillips a poke in the eye for me. <laughs> Sorry, Todd. Hey, Todd. <laughs> hey, Todd. Nice to have you on board, my friend. And, uh, of course, Terry Van Cannon's in there as well. Uh, North Carolina is absolutely representing this morning. It's very, very cool. It is. Uh, not only are we... Uh, uh, glorified. It is in the place of uh, honour. It really is the... Uh, North Carolinian flag, and also uh, wearing uh, Terry Van Cannon's brand as well. And of course, you know, I love the hat. Go out and get the hat in there as well. Now, at the same time, uh, 
you uh, have joined up with Terry Van Cannon and uh, formed the band Dr. T. Now, tell me a little bit about that. How did you do that? Well, Terry and I have been kind of uh, going around concentric circles for quite a few years around this area. You know, uh, he lives in the next town across from me uh, called Greensboro, North Carolina. It's just it's like 20 minutes. And uh, so uh, he, he was with a, a band called uh, Whiskey Foxtrot at the time. And he was involved with a, uh, an organization called Triad Musicians Matter, and they help musicians that are uh, on or luck, you know, or medical bills and things like that. And I just thought it was such a great cause. And, uh, you know, my, uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, charity work here with what I try to do. We, we, my, my cause is feeding the whole, uh, hungry, you know. So uh, Terry and I got to talking and, and uh, decided we wanted to record some stuff. So I got him to sit in on a couple of recording sessions with him. It just sounded so good. It worked out so well, you know. And I said, we just need to put this together and get, take it on the road. And, and he, was, he was up for it, so. Absolutely, and I tell you what, masterful on that uh, slide lap still. He's a beast, I tell you. And uh, the third part of Dr. T uh, is, the Dr. T stands for Dale, Rick, and Terry. And uh, so Rick Stannis is the other, uh, my other friends helped us start the band. He's a lead guitarist. And uh, we just work it well together, you know, just kind of, we got together and it just kind of worked, so. Uh, bear with me for a minute. I keep talking just very briefly. I'm actually uh, having a connection problem here. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. But, uh, but yeah, um, Terry and, um, like I said, Terry and I, we kind of went around the same block a couple of times together. And, and just, uh, we're the old guys from the... From the different communities, so it's fine about time for us to do something together, you know. Well, I think it's very, very cool. In fact, um, <clears throat> I, I want to let you know, uh, Terry has been promoting Dr. T here with us, and, uh, well, you might be familiar with this. Let me play this. <laughs> This is Terry Van Cannon of the band Dr. T out of North Carolina, and I was saved by the blues uh, and saved by Galaxy 107 FM and DJ Grant and Barbara. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Isn't he a gem? Too cool. <laughs> it really is. Now, uh, I, I know uh, Terry's version of this, and, and he's explained the song, but tell me your version of Saved by the Blues. Well, that's the song I came up with, the rhythm, uh, the chord progression of that song, and uh, I was talking to some friends, you know, we did a lot of uh, uh, open mic jams here with local, local musicians and stuff. And I was talking to some friends and uh, we had one local blues jam and, and somebody made a comment and I said, yeah, I, I was saved by the blues and it just went off in my head and I had the song written the next day, you know. And uh, my, my friend Chad Nance, who is, uh, did the video for all, all of our videos and he, he ran with the idea of putting all the old uh, blues uh, greats, you know, in, in the video and, and everything. So. It, it turned out really well. Uh, we had so much fun in, in the studio when we recorded that. We did that in one take, and I came back and overdubbed the vocals, but everything else, all the guitars and everything, just one take. They were remarkable. Absolutely fantastic. I know the video you're talking about. I've seen it a few times now. Here at Galaxy is Dale Cole, and from Dr. T, of course, Terry Van Cannon's on board. He is saved by the blues. <laughs> You don't need that drink yet. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's oh, I think I touched the song. Right, yeah, so um, Barbara was touching that. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah oh dear, oh dear, Barbara. 
Um, by the way, Barbara, I'm loving the ensemble today. Oh, good, thank you. Very, very <laughs> cool. You know, I didn't get to say that to you earlier on this morning. I apologise because uh, you absolutely, that's fantastic. Cap de what? You know, some French thing. Something French. <laughs> Fair enough. Of course, Barbara, has to be something French. So, um, Dale, have you lived all the time, all your life in Winsome Salem? Well, yes, uh, pretty much, you know, within a 10 mile area, except for the time I was in the Army, I, I, I was in Texas, in El Paso, Texas. Now, isn't Salem the place where they had all the witch hunts? No, that's Salem, Massachusetts. Ah, wrong, uh, wrong path. Okay. Yeah, this Salem uh, is one of the oldest settlements in the country, though. I mean, uh, uh, they were the Moravians from Germany came here on a land grant from the Queen and. and early early 1700s uh late 1600s like they settled this area and um the moravians were such cool people the first building that they came in when they did uh settlement the first uh community building they erected was a, a brewery so uh they were <laughs> very very cool you know well, they had their priorities right <laughs> uh, uh, we still have a, a working community part of you know called Old Salem here with the old buildings from that time and there is people dressed in the, in the time piece period wise and, and walk the street. It's very neat. Very, very cool. I, I'd love to see that actually. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I have been to the States a number of times. I've been to Bourbon Street when they have their, uh, their bourbon. party. Yeah. <laughs> their what? Their bourbon. Oh, their bourbon. Yeah, bourbon well, Street and Bourbon. Bourbon Street and Bourbon. No, they have jazz and they have uh, blues <laughs> and bourbon. Okay. And some alcohol. <laughs> the important <laughs> stuff is the music. Bourbon and bourbon. Yeah, but, slap you with that stick. Yeah, yeah. Well, believe me, I, I've been there on nights where you've needed copious amounts of beads. <laughs> 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 and believe me, I love the gumbo as well. I do. I've got to be honest. Ooh, I'm a big fan of gumbo. <laughs> I like this in New Orleans, so I can make some sort of gumbo. Oh, there you go. There you go. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I love the gumbo. I do. <laughs> Especially good gumbo. I've had some that somebody tried once, and I don't know. <laughs> they didn't come from New Orleans, that's for sure. <laughs> ready, ready, ready. Um, I apologise, Dale. I'm actually, I, I think I've got a dry connection with one of the uh, uh, mic inputs here. So from time to time, I'm getting a little bit of static. So if you see me playing with it, I do apologise, bro. I really do. Um, we've got about a minute to go so that gives you plenty of time to go and grab another bottle of anything you need to drink <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Uh, believe me I, I encourage everybody in getting um, healthily drunk while they talk to me because believe me I I, <laughs> I can't you see? I get some more information that way to get otherwise. yeah exactly besides at the moment you well the bosses won't let me do that we tried that couple of times and then the boss says no we're going to make the show into something different <laughs> yeah, it's, a true story it's, it's true actually stuff. we used to have a thing called Skype party Mondays where we would, Barbara and I would be doing a Monday night show and we'd be drinking and we'd get copious amounts of people on Skype and drinking and all sorts <laughs> of things were coming out <laughs> and believe me there was some <laughs> I, I don't know quite how to put it, but there were some things that were coming out and the bosses didn't appreciate seeing it the next day, you know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> yeah, so they says, come up with something different. So we came up with doing interviews. <laughs> Minus the alcohol. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
does so well on that slide in that one. He really, really does. Absolutely much respected Terry Van Cannon there. Uh, now, uh, you joined the army. Did you have to go and join the army to learn how to play a guitar? Well, no. I graduated high school. My 18th birthday, my dad told me I was going to get a job or get out of the house. So I kind of did both. <laughs> yeah, believe me, I'd do the same thing. Um, <laughs> in, in fact, uh, I didn't have the option. The old man threw me out of the house. Uh, yeah. It, uh, in, step two, I think. Well, actually, it was a blessing because the whole town threw me out of town. <laughs> I, I, was, I was literally told by the police, get the hell out of town and don't come back or we take you to court. Uh, well, that sucks. Yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> but it was a damn good night. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> Believe me, uh, I'm one of, the, one of the only coasters in New Zealand that can actually say uh, that he had a whole town kick him out. Literally. <laughs> uh, and, I've, well, I've been back a couple of times, but believe me, I changed the colour of my bed so they wouldn't recognise me. And what were you doing? <laughs> I yeah. I mean, was super strong. Yeah, what, what, sorry, Bubba. What were you doing? What was I doing? Yeah. I really don't want to say that in public. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. It involved guns. <gasps> yeah, yeah, Long it boys. did. Uh, believe me. <laughs> it was, well, at the time it was a lot of fun, I've got to be honest with you, but, you know, uh, youthful exuberance and guns and ammunition never mix. And a bit of alcohol as well and maybe a few yeah, other, yeah, no, <laughs> a few other substances were involved as well, if you know what I mean. And uh, yes, if you know anything about New Zealand, you'll know that down the west coast of the South Island, long way away from most cities, so if they're going to get an armed defender squad in or anything like that, uh, it's cheaper just to sit back and watch. And that's what the police did, until we ran out of bullets, and then, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. You did well for yourself, though. Yeah, I did, uh, literally. Uh, i got to be honest, I was sent to an auntie's place, and her decree is basically, and believe me, it was about 100-odd kilometres down the road, uh, her decree is, if you're going to stay with me, you're going to earn your way, Right. So, first of all, you go to school, and yeah, I get that, high school, I got to, had to finish my high school, but after high school, I had to get a job and, well, pay for my keep, which I think is quite fair. Yeah. Now, she was a cleaner at a local motel. The guy who owned the local motel actually owned a radio station in the west coast of the South Island as well, called Radio Cineclan. So, she got me a job basically cleaning and being a gopher. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, in the end, literally, long story short, uh, one of the DJs that was supposed to be on air at the time came down with appendicitis. Uh, uh, I'm the only other person in the building at the time, so I had to call wow. them an ambulance. They took him away, uh, and believe me, that was a bit of humour in its own right, because the staircase, literally, huge, uh, you know, didn't have a lot of space, and to get a gurney up there... Plus, it had stuck a wall, and stuck a wall. So these guys were scraping the blood, you know, the blood all over the place, getting him up and getting him out. That left me, a very young man at the time. Uh, thank goodness I'd been there a number of months and had watched what was going on. Uh, left in the building, so I decided that I've got one or two options. I can go home and just call it quits, you know, and let, let the boss know, and he can come and sort it out, or I can hit that chair. So I hit the chair. Next thing I know, I've actually got the boss and his sister and his brand spanking new brother-in-law. Now, whoever goes to Greymouth for a honeymoon? No Nobody goes to <laughs> Greymouth. <laughs> they did. Anyway, uh, they come up. Now, my boss is going absolutely blue murder at me, you know, not giving me a chance to explain until this guy taps him on the shoulder and says, uh, hold on, what happened? So I explained, and they went, well, okay, fair enough, you know. Thank you for stepping in. Right. And, uh, of course, the boss is saying, well, you know, go and get out and do things. And the other guy is saying, no, hold on. He's doing okay. Let him have a go. Finish the show. Right? So uh, here's the boss, literally in his office, with big bay windows in the office with uh, Venetian blinds, staring at me. 
<laughs> Dad is through this window at me, across the hall, into the glass window where the uh, sound booth was and everything like that. And I'm doing the show. In the meantime, this guy's giving me a few pointers saying, try this, try that, say this, say it like this. You know what I mean? Right. End of the day. Um, That's amazing. You yeah. You know when you break Big break's going to come, huh? Well, he said to me at the end of this, you've got a little bit of a nouse and you've got the ability to be able to do stuff. Would you like to go to university and learn how to do it properly? And I looked at him and I went, yeah, I can't afford that. And he goes, no, we'll pay for it as long as you get grades over a certain percentage. If you don't make those grades, you pay for it. You know what I mean? So I, I took the challenge. I did. I went to university. I did five years there with some of the best Radio New Zealand presenters and professors, you name it, did the whole thing, even got my uh, sound and audio degrees, the whole deal. Um, That's awesome. But unbeknownst to me at the time, this was actually New Zealand's top DJ. Wow. And the day I got my certificates and got my degrees and everything like that, uh, tossed my cap in the air and everything like that, along with that came an envelope, and in the envelope just had a little note and a plane ticket that says come to Auckland. Man, that's amazing. Hit the plane, and the next day, would you believe, I was part of, unbeknownst to me again, one of the biggest radio stations in the country. Wow, I mean, that's just, you know, oh, divine intervention right there, you know? Almost. Almost. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> believe me. It, it kind of was. It set me on the right trail, you know what I mean? Because believe me, to get to that point, I had to be, you know, do something wrong. And I think that's the silver lining right there, you know? Tradition. Yeah, absolutely. Getting kicked out of town was a good thing for me. It made sure. something of me. Uh, but having said that, at the same time, I also was in the Air Force for a number of years as well. I, I took a hiatus and went to the Air Force, tried that out for a little while, uh, and, be, and also became a return serviceman. I... Uh, didn't do any armed service, uh, well, you know, uh, active, well, I did active service, but I didn't shoot anybody, let's put it that way. Sure. I actually sat, right. sat on a roller and rolled an airport. <laughs> right. I, I, I never saw some action either. Uh, they stopped the draft in the United States like three weeks before my 18th birthday, so I didn't even have to register. So I thought, wow, this might be the best time in the world to ever join the military because there was absolutely nothing going on, you know. <laughs> Fortunate. Fair enough, too. Believe me, I ended up uh, in Fiji uh, rolling an airport out, you know, for a number of years. So, uh, But at the same time, I was there uh, under the New Zealand Armed Services and, and the Air Force, so uh, I am qualified as a return serviceman, you know what I mean? Sure. But that's enough of me. Uh, believe me, over there, you needed water. <laughs> <laughs> Fiji, gosh, you... Being a Kiwi, you know, it doesn't get that hot here in New Zealand like it does in Fiji, and you need a lot of water. Uh, especially, but you didn't need the monsoons. They get some weird weather over there sometimes, they really do. Uh, but from time to time, you need a little rain. Now, Dr. T and yourself collaborated with a song called A Little Rain. Now, tell me a little bit about that. Well, this, that was, actually it was the first song that I wrote last year after when, when the COVID hit. I just did a little demo of it. And then uh, we, we kind of evolved after I met Terry. He added some parts and, and uh, stuff. And it just really grew, grew. And, and I think it's my favorite song that I've, I've ever recorded, right? You know, right now it's, it's, um, it's got a great meaning, you know. It's, it's a metaphorical rain. It's like we were in such a dark place right then with our politics here in the United States and with the COVID going on and everything. And I just thought if we had a little bit of rain, can we wash all this stuff away? You know, everybody would feel a little bit better. And uh, that's, that's how the song came about. You know, uh, right now, people are absolutely loving it. They really, really are. And uh, I'm going to play it. But first of all, i got to say, uh, Todd Phillips, do you know Barbara? Have you met Barbara before? You know, uh, like a one-eyed cat. Barbara's got a one-eyed cat. I do. She does. <laughs> you know, it just it kind of threw me there for a minute. Here at Galaxy is Dr. T, Dale Cole, and Need a Little Rain. <laughs> that 
it's funny. There really is like a one-eyed cat. Gosh, he knows you, Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> she does. Does Barbara really have a one-eyed cat? Yeah. yeah, it's called Spice. <laughs> Yeah, I believe me. <laughs> it really is funny. <laughs> I thought, hello, you've had something going on with no, Mr. Phillips. No, I Phillips. don't know Todd. Mm -hmm. You don't know Todd? Yeah. No, well, when they come here to New Zealand, I'll When they come here Todd, to New Zealand, yep. But Todd yeah. owns a recording studio and a, and a light and sound system. Uh, he, he works right sound for concert stuff around here. And I'm actually going up there next month. I've got a couple more that are going to be recording with him and... Uh, a, a guitarist, my first band that played in in high school. We're getting all getting this back together, and, and uh, wow. uh, it's going to be a really cool song. I'm anxious to get it recorded. Well, will you, when you've got it mastered, will you pass on a copy to us? Will you come back for another interview? Sure. We would. Uh, sure, I'd love to. Uh, actually, we're going to be recording two next month. Uh, one's like a really pop 1960s kind of A and pop radio kind of song with horns and strings and stuff and then the other one is more kind of reminds you of Tom Petty uh way it feels we got a fiddle player on it and everything you know. oh, so it's, it's a really cool song well Dale, I've got to be honest with you I'm really really excited about that because I, I would love to be able to uh, keep the music rolling keep the relationship rolling keep promoting you here sure. in Johnson. I would, we appreciate that so much you don't understand uh how we, much we appreciate well, the support I, I, you guys give. I tell you what, it's an absolute honour. It really, really is. Um, I love your work. Now, I'm an engineer. Literally myself, I've been an engineer now for almost 40 years. Um, not only studio engineer, but front of house as well. I've travelled around the world with a number of well-known bands. Um, yeah. and, and so I have an ear for good music. You know what I mean? Right. And I, I honestly, I love your work. I love Terry Van Cannon's work. I love Epstein's work. Um, we're well, so blessed in this area. The music yeah. that we have going on here right now, it's just, it's crazy. You know, you, you play Smitty, you play Corey Luchin. You know, I'm, I'm, Corey's a friend. Uh, I actually uh, put out three compilation albums in this last year. And we sold these records online, digital things. I'll send you out some copies of this uh, online, you know, and, and I sent out calls to my musicians, friends, you know, can you donate me a song, you, you know, doing this? And uh, everybody that they're, everybody just blew me away with the, with the response I got back with all this. And well, uh, we raised like $6,000. Awesome, awesome. Um, that's good, that's brilliant. Um, now, at the same time, Dale, I get told a lot of times, you know, you spend so much time in Canada, you talk to a lot of Canadians, and then I get told, you talk to a hell of a lot of North Carolinians, and you, know, you see, the whole thing is, Dale, it would be remiss of me to bypass damn good music. Sure. You know what I mean? And so I, I appreciate being, being even considered in that, uh, people if you play, it really is an honour. Believe me, Dale, um, it, it's not easy getting an interview here with us. So I've got to be honest, or actually airplay. Um, poor Barbara gets between 30 and 50 bands a day. <laughs> That's really, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then she's got to whittle that down. Then she takes that to production. Production and Barbara sort of work it out, you know, the, once they've got that sorted. Because we've only got a certain amount of time in a week to be able to do these. Right. Um, it's got to be approved by a board, which takes time, and it could be anything between 8 and 12 people on the board. Then, once that's all done, because they're only concerned about our image, right? It's got to be sure. good. So once all those boxes are tacked, then it comes to me. Barbara gives it to me on a USB device, and I go driving in my car. I've got a kick-ass stereo in my car, right? Sure. And that gives me no information. It just gives me the music. I don't... Here, well, I don't see who it is, what the title is, anything like that, and I can make up my mind then whether I want right. to do the interview. You know what I mean? Without yes, any yeah. other influence. So that's, you know, there's two reasons. First, nobody can influence me. The second reason is nobody wants to drive with me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we we record we record we mix everything to sound good on a car stereo. There you go, there you go. Let's go back to the desk. I'm going to hold you to that one. <laughs>
You know, that's a bit of me. It really is. I love, love, love the blues and the way everything has been structured. Uh, Todd, nice to know that you've got a recording studio and do all of that. Uh, maybe, you know, we can talk turkey one day, believe me. I'm very, very ticko being an engineer myself. Uh, been there a number of years, really have. So uh, we'd love to be able to uh, catch up with you in the future. Now, uh, Dale, i got to be honest with you. This particular track that we're about to play, Empty House Blues, is your most requested song. Now, it has gone through the roof. Literally, there's over 3,300 requests, and it's climbing. So please, wow. tell me, tell me, tell me all about it. How did you come to the lyrics of this? I had the, I had the riff, that, that, that blues riff. You know, I recorded that, and I would go out and play that blues jam and stuff and just... Make up words, make up words, and uh, I was. We needed a song for my last band when we were going in the studio. We to sing, and I said, "Well, let's do an original." We were a cover band, and I said, "Let's do an original." I have this song. I said, "Let's work it out." And uh, I was watching a television show about you know this guy got something, gets something, his wife's nowhere to be found, and I said, "Well, there's my song." I woke up this morning, my baby was gone, and it and it just kind of fell into place, and. Uh, I talked to my friend Mike Wesolowski, and he plays the harmonica on this, and he's just like, just an amazing, amazing harp player. And he said, sure, and we, he came in the studio, and, and uh, that was another one of those songs we did in like one take, and it was just, uh, kind of just fell into place. It was really a fun thing to do. That's fantastic, and believe me, uh, well, you never know, uh, you might be appearing in another show, not some, I, I can see you being on Matt's show, you know, the Friday Night Gamble. Oh, I was I was supposed to have been there last month. Terry and I were going to be on there, and um, it just something came out. We had to cancel. We were supposed to be there May twenty first. I thought, I think so. We're going to reschedule probably a little later on in the summer. Well, Matt, Matt's a good friend. Matt's a buddy of mine. So yeah, yeah. Believe me, we love Matt. We really, really do. Just it, watch out for his drinking buddy. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I know, Chet. <laughs> That man could drink a gallon of bloody petrol, I'm sure of it. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, I've known Matt, uh, you know, 20 some years when he was like playing, he was playing like three piece blues band that would go around and, and stuff and just talk, uh, just to kill him with guitars. Absolutely fantastic. We, we love his style, we really, really do. And as I said to you, it would be remiss of us if we didn't at least. Spend some time in North Carolina and get right down there with all of the good artists and bring them to a global audience like Dale Come on, we'll do a show and you guys can do, be the host of the show and we'll, we'll get a, 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 all these bands together and do all day with it. There you go. I will be there in a heartbeat. In the meantime, live here with Dale Cole, here's Empty House Blues. 3,391 requests to date and climbing. How many did you say? 3,391 requests. 3,391. Yeah, that's, that's just crazy. I wish, I wish they would do that here. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't forget, I mean, we are in 70-odd different countries around the world and um, hundreds of cities. Oh, hi, Ryan. How should you I know, um, And it's an honour to be able to bring music like this to our audio audience. It really is, because... Uh, wow. yeah, we, we pride ourselves, Dale, of not only saying up, that we play the best music, but we make sure that we play the kind of music that you won't hear anywhere else in the world. You know what I mean? Good blues. You may hear it on different radio stations, but not in the format that we presented it. Literally. Ryan Neville's digging this cat. Ryan yeah. Neville. Nice to have you on board, Ryan. Kia ora, bro. I've found some... Uh, Local people in the that I've never heard of before. It really expanded my uh, uh, awareness of what who was around here as well. I think what the Charlie Horse is that is that yes, yeah, they've got oh, to interview me, that man. They're good. Yes, my friend, and uh, they are coming up for an interview in the near future actually. Um, but we have people literally. Not only does Barbara get in on data, but we actually have people around the world that source out music for us um, and. Mm -hmm. 
we want to give a fair platform to indie artists. I mean, you know, once you've made it, I mean, the Rehanas and the, you know, all of these people who have got the money, you know, and you know, are already making it, you know, well done, good for them. I'm more interested in the people that are striving the hardest to try and just niche out something and play some damn good music. You know, and that's the thing, there's a lot of music, good music, that you'll just never hear, but you've given an outlet to that, and, and bless your heart, thank you for too. it. You know, we thank you. I know uh, all these, everybody I talk to around here, it's kudos to you guys, you know. Oh, and we, nice. we, we appreciate it so much. Well, oh. you know, bro, um, as I said, it's, it's got to be good. <clears throat> it really does. Of course. You have no idea how many really bad garage bands try and get hold of us, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I, I get, I do a bunch of stuff here on my end and I get those same bands, those kind of people bringing mm -hmm. me stuff too, you know, so I, I, I understand. So, uh, and, and no offence to them, it's just that, believe me, we have, uh, we have a standard and Barbara has a big red pencil, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, she's got to be brutal to be able to get this done every week and yeah, otherwise, we like Poor Barbara Honestly. would grow a grey beard. No. <laughs> otherwise, got bigger. If she, if she, otherwise, her sanity, you believe me. And everybody needs a Barbara because she's so efficient at what she does. She really is. Props to you, Barbara. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, she's a great PR. She really is. Great co host as well. I appreciate she'll send me the clips of y'all. Photos of out the screen and everything, and, and it just—you it, never get tired of hearing your song on the radio or seeing that. You know, when, when you know you're being played, that's just one of the most amazing feelings in the world. Well, oh, Dale, it's an absolute pleasure to be able to do so. <clears throat> and, and you know something, um, we hope we don't annoy the hell out of you by sending oh, them no, to you no, all the time. You know what no, I mean? That, that's, uh, like I said, I don't think I would ever get tired of that, or, or get used to it even, you know? <laughs> very, very cool. Uh, now, I will let you know how many people were online through this interview, uh, once we've completed the interview. Uh, you'll get a copy of everything we do today, too, by the way. And at the same time, uh, we're also going to make a cartoon out of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do that. We, we do that, we do. You'll get... I've got a lot worse out of myself. Okay, well, after we complete this, we'll do some crazy photos. Uh, you'll get some of those so that you can put them on your phone, show your friends, you know, Kiwi's not healthy. Don't do it. I don't <laughs> you know. make cartoons. Eh? Um, but Barbara also makes a movie, and then she makes a cartoon of the movie. <laughs> That's crazy. That's so cool. It really is. <laughs> and believe me... Um, People, I, I don't know why they want to watch the, the interview over with. In fact, maybe I thought they might need a therapist. Oh, but hi, I've had people say, I've watched it 13 times. Now time I've, no we send them the cartoon. They go, I've watched it about 40 times. I'm what, going, are you nuts? <laughs> PJ's looking. PJ's looking. PJ's looking. PJ's looking. Anton's friend. Yes. Come back home. Ran out of time. Try that. Here we go. Da -doom, da -doom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my fault. I didn't trigger it. I'm sorry. PJ's watching. PJ, it's been a dog's age since we caught up. PJ Jameson and uh, first met him down at uh, Barbara, your son's place. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely great guy. Absolutely brilliant. Nice to have you on board, my friend. Uh, now at the same time, Dale. Uh, that does bring us to the end of the interview. Now, I've got just a couple of things I've got to ask you. Uh, and, and please don't go anywhere once we finish this. We do a couple of photos and stuff like that. Uh, but I do have a couple of things to ask you. Uh, first of all, PJ, we'd love to be able to uh, put a festival together, you know, with uh, people that we've been discussing, including Terry Van Cannon and uh, uh, a number of other people coming out of North Carolina. Would you consider coming to New Zealand and playing in the Antipodes as well? Well, sure. I mean, me and Terry could come over and do, you know, we could do a, we could do a set. That would be amazing. Absolutely fantastic. Of course, uh, we want to get uh, 
Brian Smith or Smitty and the Jump Starters down here as well, Thank of course, at uh, Matt as well, and a number of other people, there, including Dr. John, you know what I mean? Let's make a whole North Carolinian party here in New Zealand. What do you reckon? Yeah. That would be amazing. We, we would just, we would love that. Wouldn't that be amazing? Tell you what, uh, and believe me, even though that we are going through a pandemic kind of deal, and our uh, borders are closed right now. Everybody understands that right now. Uh, we're not sitting on our hands. We are literally gearing up for our international artists to come back. We've got a number of uh, staff. Uh, Barbara runs an uh, entertainment company that brings bands into the country. She does all the logistics, everything like that. Fully, wow. fully blown and very, very capable lady. As I said, you know, everybody needs a Barbara. Uh, her business literally uh, right now is something I've got to be honest because of the, uh, the the pandemic thing, but we all understand that. You know what I mean? Sure. But once we get it underway, don't be surprised if one day, very very shortly in the near future, when we open up our borders again, that Barbara gets you and gives you a little tap on the shoulder and says, "Hey, listen, I've got something in mind. Would you sit down and round table with me?" So please. Please keep in touch with us, won't you? Please, please. I'd be, I'd be honored and, and uh, it would be an amazing thing to do. And of, course, and of course, we've got to bring Todd Phillips with us. Yes, sir. You know, we, we need Todd, Todd on board and also Rick as well. Todd, an amazing bass player. He really is. He's... There you go. So we need Todd, we need Rick, we need Kerry. We need the North Carolinians playing here live in New Zealand, and I reckon that's a great idea. Let's make it happen. Uh, Dale, thank you so much for joining us. Will you please come back again in the near future? I would love it, Grant. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's been a hoot. It really has been, been, a, been a fun thing. Thank you. And you didn't give me shit, which I'm upset about now. I'm really, you know, <laughs> you could have done that. Next time. <laughs> Next time. There you go. <laughs> but in the meantime, don't go anywhere just yet, Dale. Let's hand you back over to Studio B. Here is Hush. And now a flashback 45.